Hi guys, it's Mana. So today is a little different. Usually I post vlog style videos, but I've been getting some questions lately. So I thought I would just sit down for a little bit and talk about my background, I guess. So a little background about me. If you didn't know, I grew up in LA. I was there for 18 years. Um, went to like American school from you know elementary school all the way to high school and if you want to um, watch my high school vlogs they're also there so I'll like you know I'll link it right here I'm ethnically Japanese I'm full Japanese but I grew up in America so I consider myself to be a Japanese American but then I would visit Japan about like once a year over the summer and because I have relatives here I have my grandparents and everything so I visit and Japan is always this really fun place to be and when I was applying for colleges I just to be quite honest, I never thought I'd be in Japan. Like, I never in a million years thought I would be in this country. But, you know, look where I am now. If I was going to a college in America, I wanted to stay in California because of the weather and just because I would be closer to family and everything. But I applied to a bunch of UC schools, some state schools, some privates. I just did the whole shebang. But, and so I got into these universities I always really wanted to and I like, visited and was interested in going to. But if you're in college in America, you have to dorm your first year, so you have to live on campus. Because I guess dorm is a term that only Americans use. Like some people call it colleges, or I don't know. I found that out when I moved here. But anyways, you have to live on campus your freshman year. So you join this thing, you join this Facebook group, so it'll be like, you see Berkeley, class of 2021, UC Davis, whatever. And there, it's kind of like, online tinder looking for a roommate though which is kind of funny but you'll be like hey my name is mana i am blah blah years old i'm majoring in this and that and I, uh, in high school i was a part of cheer asb link crew yearbook whatever and you just list what you like um list you also list like how clean you are so you'd be like yeah i like my room to be semi dirty like or i like it really clean all the time or you talk about your drinking habits and everything so it's like you really get into the nitty-gritty of things but when i was reading it and looking for a potential roommate i was scrolling not swiping but when i was reading it it was just like for me, it felt like someone from California going to a different part of California. So let's say I'm from LA and I was going up to San Francisco. Or there's someone from San Jose going to San Diego. And yeah, that's still cool because California is huge. For me, I just wanted something drastically different. I always wanted to study abroad. Like, funny story, um, when I was in high school, I actually was like looking to go. I wanted to study abroad in Switzerland for some reason. So I was looking at boarding schools in Switzerland that I could go from starting my sophomore year. And I've always just been interested in other cultures and how other societies are like in a way. Because I grew up in the same community for 18 years. Like, like we called it a bubble. Like the, everyone from around there, we knew it was a bubble because it was just in the kind of in the mountains, right by the beach, but it was in the mountains. And we all knew each other. Like we would visit each other's family. It was a very tight knit community. So I just wanted to change it up a lot. And when I was applying, to give a brief background, I have two older sisters and I'm the youngest. And my oldest sister actually went to a university in Japan. And my other one, uh, she's still in college but she goes to UCLA right now. And I also had older friends that were in college all around the world, so like some were in like New Jersey, somewhere in like England or whatever. And then I was just comparing and contrasting the pros and cons. There were so many pros for me staying in California. But there were also so many more benefits and life experiences that I would have gotten if I just went outside my comfort zone. I can still remember staying up at night. Just so conflicted, I didn't know what to do. I wanted to stay obviously because home, friends, everything that I knew, everything I grew up with was in America. But a part of me was just longing to see what else was there in the world. So I just one day I told my parents, I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it, I'm going to go to Japan. And thankfully my parents were really supportive and they're like, yeah, that's really cool, we'll support whatever choice that you make. So in September of 2017, so almost two years ago, I've been here for a year and a half now, I'm currently a sophomore at Doshushu University, but a year and a half ago I moved to Japan, Kyoto, Japan. And there comes question number two. Why did I choose Kyoto instead of Tokyo? 
well to keep it simple all of my relatives live in the Kansai area which is like Kyoto, Osaka, that area whereas I don't really have any relatives in Tokyo so like obviously it's a little scary to move all the way across the world by yourself so I wanted to have relatives around me and also I just don't really like crowds that much I get people sick I love Disneyland so I would go all the time but I just couldn't stand the people because there's just too many people around me and every time I visit Tokyo it was just yeah it was insane I don't even know how to explain it but there's people all around you okay this is how I explain it to people that don't really know the difference between Tokyo and Kyoto but if you know America, this is going to be easy for you to understand. So Tokyo is more like New York in the sense that everything's like go, go, go. Everything's very fast paced. Whereas Kyoto and Osaka area is more like LA. So everyone's more calm, it's chill, laid back. People are really nice and funny. Um, there's a lot of nature, which is lacking in Tokyo a little bit in my opinion. But there's a lot of nature in Kyoto because there's a lot of temples and shrines and just historical areas all throughout the city so that was more my speed I need to chill a little bit I can't be running around all the time so that's why I chose Kyoto what am I studying so right now I go to Doshishi University in Kyoto Japan Doshishi is actually a private school um, it's right next to the Kyoto Imperial Palace I also made a video about this it's literally like you cross the street and you're at the Imperial Palace, which is kind of cool. But anyways, I'm at Doshishi University. I'm in this program called ILA, so it stands for Institute of the Liberal Arts. So it says liberal arts, but you have like an emphasis. So you can be like a political science major, econ, commerce, business, or like culture or something like that. And so within the ILA, I am an econ major. So the thing that's really cool about my program is that since we have a liberal arts background, we can take whatever classes that we want. So I've been taking a lot of Japanese culture related classes. Like one of the semesters I took a class about tea ceremonies in Japan. So we literally got like this tea ceremony kit and we learned how to whisk the green tea and like the proper way to drink it and what to say and it was just really cool. Also, there was a class called Intro to Kyoto which taught us a lot about historical aspects of Kyoto just amongst the city that knew you wouldn't typically notice, which is really cool, but I'm also taking like, you know, the business classes like finance and accounting and all that. And another thing about the ILA is that the classes are really small or the faculty, should I say? There's only about uh, I think there's like 22, 23 people in my batch. Uh, we call it a batch because every semester there's a new batch that comes in. So if someone asked me what semester I am, I would say, oh, I am a second year, second semester student because there's a second year, first semester too. And that happens because there are people like me from America or like England or whatever and they graduate in June, start the new school year in September. We entered in the fall, whereas the other countries like Japan, they start the new school year in spring. So there, there are some kids from like international schools that enter ILA, so they're coming through the spring semester. And that's why we have spring semester and fall semester, kind of like that. But then we have very small batches, like 20-ish, which was a shock because I came from a high school that had I don't know how many people, like 600, 700 people in one grade. So going from that to 20 was, yes, you could probably imagine. But for me, I actually really liked it because for in each class, there's only about like 20 to 30 people. So you are on a first name basis with everyone. The professors know you by name. So if you want to skip class, like they would know, they would notice that you were gone and ask you the next class and be like, why did you miss class or something like that. Some people might not like that, but for me, I personally really like it because there have been moments where I've gotten dinner, coffee or tea at a cafe with my professors and just sit down and talk about my future or just discuss in detail about what we've been learning in class. So expanding on the theories that we learned and how we can apply it to the real world. And it's just been really nice to have a relationship with your professors instead of just sitting in like a huge lecture hall with 300 other kids yeah that was definitely not for me so very small classrooms and extremely small grades something that i really appreciate about these small grades are that i would say like 98 percent of these kids are literally like moving across the world 
to come study at Doshisha. So I have classmates from Mongolia, I have classmates from like Uganda, Austria, Hong Kong, like anywhere and everywhere in the world. And it's really unique because we'll be in class and because of the small class sizes, you can have really heated but intimate at the same time class discussions. It's really interesting because you'll be sitting in class and the professor asks for opinion and then if my classmate answers, it'll be an opinion from Australia or somewhere that I would have never like known about if it wasn't for my classmates. So I really like hearing their insight because it's really, really unique and I really value being able to communicate and converse with my friends that are from all over the world because it's like how cool is that? Like I just I love it so much. How did I apply to a university in Japan? I only applied to one university in Japan. I applied to like, actually don't even remember how many I applied to, but I applied to quite a few um, in California, in state. Uh, yeah, this is the only school I applied to in Japan and this is the school I'm going to currently. But it was on the Common app, funny enough. Um, I was talking to a lot of my friends here. I was wondering how they found out about Doshishi and how they got to where they are right now. A couple of them applied through the Common App as well, like me. It was really nice because it was just like writing two extra essays and you're already writing like 20 or 30 when you're applying to colleges anyways. So like an additional one or two wasn't that big of a deal. The whole process was, at least for Doshisha University, the program I'm in, was that I applied through Common App so I wrote like I think two essays. Like one essay for the Common App essay, like the general one, like the 750 words one, and then the other one extra one for just Doshisha University, which was around like a thousand five hundred words, a thousand words, I don't know, it was a lot more than the typical college level, a college word count in America. And after that, you have to pass, and then they do like a Skype interview with you, and then there's like 15 to 20 minutes, which was really fun too because you got to talk with the professors. Was it tough for me when I first moved here? I'm very fluent in Japanese. I grew up speaking it, I can write and read as well, but it was still difficult for me. I don't know what I was expecting, but I was just so shocked to see everything in Japanese. like my phone bill, my setting up my bank account, like everything and anything. So I remember that when I first moved here, I had friends from, you know, all over the world and that some couldn't speak Japanese or understand it, so I would call for them and help them set up their phone or something like that. So there are language barriers in that sense, but Japan's actually getting a lot better with the Olympics coming up that they've been putting up a lot of signs all throughout the city. So it's helping a lot with my foreign friends, which is cool. Did I have culture shock? Yes, I had a lot of culture shock. Um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what I was shocked about because I've been here for almost two years, so I'm kind of used to it and I have reverse culture shock now that I go to America and I'm like, did we always do things like that? I remember I was so miserable when I first moved here. It was, I moved here in September of 2017, so it was obviously fall and winter time. And I'm from LA where it's like sunny skies and warm weather almost all the time. I can vividly recall waking up every morning and checking the weather and just seeing the temperature go down, down, down. I was like, when is this gonna stop? And it was hard because I was away from my family and my friends and I was just adjusting to life here and everything being so orderly and I was just questioning everything. Um, maybe I can make a video about culture shock and how that experience was for me because this is gonna be a whole whole long segment, but it was hard for me at first, don't get me wrong, it was really hard for me. I stayed with it because I was like, you know what, it, it has to get better, like it's just me being in shock right now because I left my bubble for the first time. Like I mean now, I'm really, really, really enjoying Japan and I can say with confidence that moving to Japan has been the best decision of my life. And if it's shocking for me to even say that right now and admit that because it was really difficult for me in the beginning, but now with all the people I've met, all the amazing experiences I've had, just being able to try new foods, just travel around, just talk to people with different ideas and expose myself to the world has been the greatest experience of my life. Each and every day, I try to live with the motto of becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable. And it was obviously very uncomfortable for me living in Japan at first by myself because everything was foreign, everything was new. But now that I've gotten used to it, it's 
been great and I have become more confident, a lot more independent just by living by myself. Another reason why I chose to come to Japan or Doshisha should I say it was because Doshisha has a really good study abroad program, like an exchange program. I'm already studying abroad in Japan technically, but I always wanted to try living in Europe or somewhere completely different. So I'm actually taking advantage of that system and I'm gonna go abroad to Holland, so the Netherlands starting this fall for one year. So I'm gonna be studying at Leiden University in the Netherlands. So I'm really excited. My first two years have been in Japan, my third year is in Europe, and my fourth year I'll be back in Japan. So I've been able to travel all over Japan, all over Asia, and it's been great. If you have any other questions or any anything that you're wondering about, just leave a comment below and I'll try to answer them as much as I can. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!